the most important uh, slides, if I had to present anything today, is this one. The concept that we are here to help you. The, um, the patient, as you can see in this graphic, is at the center. And there is a lot of people around this, this driver. And um, these people are collaborating, making sure that the person, the driver is safe and everything is gonna be okay. In addition, um, we need to remind ourselves that the driver not only drives the, the, ca the car, but also he needs to interact with the other members of the team. So the, the message that I have for you as a patient is that you are at the driver's seat. We need to educate, inform, so we have a better way to achieve the goals of, that you have in your, in your management. So we're gonna talk a little bit about self-agency, meaning that drives that is requires in patients, collaboration and trust as the key for success in care. Next. Um, many of you may be new to the disease and many of you may have several years, but I always tell my patients that for me, uh, when I see them, even though they come uh, either as a new patient or as a chronic patient with MS, I want to onboard it, so onboard the patient. So what does that mean? is to um, patients to welcome them to our uh, way of management of care, where they have to understand their particular diagnosis. Sometimes patients uh, use Google and try to understand their disease. I mean, MS is very heterogeneous and you need to understand your personal level of disease rather than what is actually in Google. We need to, te to teach you and you can learn to adapt to the new challenges and learn interactively from your team. Uh, at the end of the day, we have a plan, a plan not only to uh, understand your disease, but to thrive. But in, you need to real, realize as a patient that in order to thrive, you need to understand where you are in your trajectory of the disease. We know that um, what happens in the first 18 months of your uh, MS diagnosis can be not only very challenging, but also it's a window of opportunity and by the way, we know now that whatever happens in the first 18 months can be uh, a prediction or used as a prognosis in many patients. Next. Now, why MS and why we're doing this today here, why this is so important? Well, there are many reasons. And one is the economical cost that MS uh, presents for uh, the uh, population. And this is an estimate. This is a study done by the MS Society, this is our total cost of MS in 2019, about $85 billion. And the projections are that by 2039 will be about $105 billion. But what is not noted in this slide is your personal cost. Um, many MS patients are diagnosed at the prime of their lives and immediately uh, everything takes a turn for the worse. Some patients might lose their jobs. Some patients might lose their insurance. Some patients might have issues that uh, prohibit them to interact with family members, et cetera. So it is a very challenging diagnosis. It's a very challenging life. Our job always is to make things better and understand where you are and start this, what we call secondary prevention of the disease. Next. Now in, in patients um, that are of Hispanic background, um, there are certain biological issues and there are also that are, can be uh, fueled by difference in socioeconomical uh, aspects. And uh, we know that the, uh, there are implicit bias, there are issues with access of care. I have personal experience uh, because of my background, uh, I'm Hispanic, I speak three languages, uh, including Espanol, and, and I communicate with my patient in Spanish uh, when they need it. So I understand um, what are the issues that you have to have to go through. So the idea is that if you don't have access of care, that will lead to a delay in diagnosis and underutilization of services that will lead to, pro to progression and worsening of your disease. Um, these factors are relevant, but also the delay on starting medications. We know that um, patients uh, that are with diverse origin or diverse background, they have problems to start medications for many reasons, but that influences the prognosis of the patients. Next. 
Now, uh, let's touch bases about the social determinants of health. And these are institutional or um, barriers that are being established for many, many years. And I brought this slide to say that uh, there are many things that are there that are difficult to overcome, but I think that we as providers, we can help patients, especially in what I call the health literacy and uh, the understanding of your disease, and also changing the perception of a disease for, for you um, and uh, helping with issues with uh, access to health insurance. Next. Now, we know that there are some difference, um, difference in prognosis, difference in presentations. So what are they? We know that there are uh, issues with younger presentations. Uh, sometimes patients are coming young and younger, and this has to do with either an exposure to ACE bar virus of a low vitamin D. We know that there are more risk for having optic neuritis, that is an inflammation of the eye, or transverse myelitis, that is an inflammation of the spine. Uh, we know that uh, our patients might have more uh, spinal cord involvement, meaning that they can have issues with walking uh, faster than regular uh, patients with MS. And we know that uh, for many other reasons, there are a lot of patients with uh, low vitamin D that is important because vitamin D is associated with improving uh, the risk of MS. Next. Now, as I mentioned to you, what we want to achieve with you is to um, work in what we call the window of opportunity. And this is important for you as a patient because we want to empower you and inform you. If we lose that window of opportunity, things are gonna take a turn for the worse. So if we have a delay in diagnosis, if we have a delay in management, uh, things are not going to do well. So meaning that we need to apply what we call uh, prevention strategies or secondary prevention strategies. We know that we can change the trajectory of the patients at the beginning is easier than if you wait for many, many years. It's more, it's more difficult to change that trajectory of the patient. Next. Now, what are the goals of your care? Um, we need to talk to you, talk to patients and families, and, and kind of educate and inform about what the goals of CARES are. So the goals of CARES are actually prevent progression, that is the worsening of the disease. Here, I have to make a distinction between symptoms in MS and what we call progression of damage in the brain. Some patients um, may confuse the, um, the remaining or the activity of the symptoms as activity of the disease in the brain, and that's not uh, the case. Uh, the disease sometimes may be uh, silent and remain progressive. And then uh, the disability will ensue uh, in uh, probably a matter of months or many years. So we need to establish the goals of care, distinguish what is a relapse versus a pseudo relapse. So a relapse is a new symptom, usually. Pseudo relapses are all symptoms that can get worse if you have uh, you know, fatigue or you are overheated, that's an important thing. You need to know that we want to measure your disease activity every time you come to clinic. And there is a, a method and there is a phrase that we use, no evidence of disease activity that is a goal of care. So you just don't usually show up to clinic. Uh, the majority of MS centers in the country uses these um, metrics so we can actually uh, make sure that you are at goal. Now we have to avoid silent progression, as I mentioned to you, uh, because we know that there are progression independent of relapses. And this is important because you as a patient, you need to understand exactly what is happening with your disease. So that's why we prefer in a structured visit uh, and then uh, with very clear goals about what is not only what we see, but also what we need to do for each of you. Next. So here is the structure visit. If you uh, don't get anything out of this, this is an important thing for you because we want to empower you. As a patient, you need to understand what your burden of symptoms are. Whether you have a new symptom, you have to keep a diary, you have to make a list to discuss, that empowers you and keep you at, uh, at goal. 
you need to understand that there are uh, the, the issues of the burden of disease activity. You need to know about your lesions, where are they, uh, whether you have new or whether the lesions are enhancing that signify that you have active disease. In addition, you need to know about your risk factor for progression uh, here in the bottom. Uh, for instance, if you are a smoker, if you lack vitamin D, uh, um, what diet you have, and whether you have other diseases. These are important because we know that, for instance, smoking is an independent risk factor for progression. And at the end, that leads to a plan. Every patient has to have a plan of care and has to have a personalized, a personalized patient education plan to understand their disease. Next. Now, Personalized education is not just part of what we do. It's also part of what the patient do on their own. We need to build communities, uh, patients, uh, additional stakeholders like the MS Society. Uh, we need to uh, increase awareness and, and those awareness uh, can be global movements like the one that we have or, uh, already here. And then we need to um, actually target or educate first degree relatives of patients with family members with MS. We know that there are patients at risk and this patient needs to be followed very closely. Next. In conclusion, um, I would like to um, empower you by telling you that a prone diagnosis and onboarding is key and is the first step uh, on the road and recovery and thriving. You cannot thrive if you don't understand. You cannot thrive if you don't overcome. And Believe me, because I have the experience, I don't have a mess myself, but I have seen thousands of you. When you go and you are educated, when you are embraced and when you're onboarded, then this becomes more manageable. We need to include the patients and the families. Cell advocacy is key for prevention, in this case, secondary prevention. You as a patient, you have to be proactive because that uh, proactivity, um, we know that changes the trajectory. So the MS care is a uh, team sport, as they said, uh, sometimes all the players are important and we have to customize that for every patient. Mm -hmm.